Some people are really into drama, right? They say dramatic things. Some moms will say to their son, from today, you are not my son. Fathers can say, if you do this again, you are no longer my son. Like, Actually, I, I am. You can't, the genetics are still, yeah. I, I look like you, dad, look, look at me. You can't emotionally blackmail people. You can't use emotions to control people. You know, relationships are supposed to be healthy, which means I have some rights and my wife has some rights. I have some rights, my parents have some rights. I have some rights, my siblings have some rights. I have responsibilities, they also have what? Responsibilities, it's a give and take. The only relationship where one has all the rights and the other has no rights is Allah and the slave. Because Allah has all the rights and we are just slaves of Allah. We don't have any rights against Allah. Everything Allah gives us is a favor from Him. Every other relationship has what? Rights and responsibilities. You think of a mother who doesn't feed her child and throws him out in the trash and goes to jail because of it. She says, but in Islam, I have all the rights. And that baby I threw in the trash should still treat me with ihsan when he grows up one day after he comes out of foster care. You think she has that right? You think this is what Islam teaches? No. No, There's you have to do your part. Even in the dua you make for your parents, for example, you say, Rabbi Rahmhuma, my master, show them both Rahma. But you don't stop there. What do you say? Kama Rabbi the way they raised me when I was, the way they nurtured me when I was small. But if they were beating you up when you were small, if they were abusing you when you were small, if they were abandoning you when you were small, if they were drinking alcohol and fighting each other and scarring you psychologically in front of you when you were small, is that Rabbayani? You know what that is? That's emotional cleansing. Why? Because now the only, emotionally, you only carry the burdens Allah made you carry. And you don't have to carry any burdens and any guilt that Allah did not make you carry. In, in our families and in our cultures, there are some things that are wrong, but they're not wrong in Islam. There are some things that are culturally very wrong, but they're not wrong in Islam. And when you do something that's, Allah has no problem with it. Completely halal, Allah has no problem with it. And you're doing the right thing. And everyone in your family says, this is wrong, we hate you, we can't believe you did this, you're such a shame. Allah will ask you, why well, Allah, Allah is actually not having a problem at all. You're having a problem, Allah has no problem. I'm well within my rights. I didn't violate anybody's rights. I stayed within Allah's shade of halal. You know what Allah does? He removes that emotional baggage. He cleanses my emotions. I don't have to carry those emotions with me. I don't have to carry that guilt with me. If I owe real guilt, I owe it to someone who I actually wronged according to the book of Allah. If I actually wronged my parents, I owe that. And the other incredible emotional cleansing that Allah did is, how many times do you have to make tawbah to Allah before Allah accepts the tawbah? Tell me. Sincere tawbah, how many times? And then you have to believe that Allah has what? Forgiven. You have to believe that. Musa a.s. killed somebody. And he made istighfar to Allah. But did he keep on making istighfar to Allah? He made istighfar to Allah. That's it. Now he's doing good things. He's moved on. Because he's hoping that Allah will now forgive. What do we do? You know, you're not really sorry, right? Yes, I am. I am sorry. I said I'm sorry. Did you though? And then the next time you're in a bad mood, you remember what you did, right? But I said sorry for that. Yeah, you said sorry. You think that's enough? But I didn't just say sorry. I try, I asked you, what can I do to make it up to you? And you said this, this, and this. And I did this, this, and this. And you're bringing it up again? Yeah, well, I can't let it go. Because I don't think you've paid enough of a price. I don't think Allah will forgive you. Because I'm not happy. Oh, this is the last one I'm going to share with you on emotional cleansing that Allah gave us. Some people say, until I forgive you, I can guarantee you Allah will not forgive you. You think you and I control Allah's forgiveness? Rasulullah was in Uhud and he got injured. He fell unconscious. He wakes up from unconsciousness and he says, How can Allah guide a people that spill its Prophet's blood? He was upset with the Quraysh who almost killed him. You know what Allah said to him? You have no authority. Whether he forgives them, accepts their tawbah, or he punishes them, Allah owns whatever's in the skies and whatever's in the earth. He forgives whoever he wants, and he punishes whoever he wants. Wallahu ghafoor rahim. And Allah is forgiving. By the way, who was the one person in the battle of Uhud that caused the Prophet to bleed, actually? One person who turned the whole battle around. His name is Khalid ibn Walid. He was the strategist who saw the Muslims are in a weak position, we can come around, flank them from behind, and that's when everything went bad for the Muslims. Did Allah forgive him? Did he become a Sahabi? The one who was the reason for the Prophet almost being killed, right? Allah says, He forgives whoever He wants. He punishes whoever He wants. That's up to Allah. 